Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel where I will be crocheting it forward in this video by showing you how to make this boys basketball applique. I am making a sports robe. Oh gosh, it's been one of my whips. Um, work in progress is for my grandson. Just a robe with a bunch of sports that he likes to play, which is a lot of them. And I just got really busy last year and preoccupied with some family deaths. And, you know, put this on the back burner. And he had asked me today um, if I could just get it done for him. So I'm going to try to do that. And I'm going to start with this basketball one. It's super easy, super cute. I had made him a corner-to-corner -corner robe. I don't know if any of you recall me saying that. Um, I plan on making a video on that. That was super easy as well. And I'm just going to uh, sew these on. That is why I've done this outline in the same color so it'll be easier to sew on so i just want to take a moment and thank every one of my subscribers i hit a thousand today march 2nd 2019 and i was hoping to reach that by the new year but you know what i'm not even mad i'm just super duper grateful and i appreciate everyone that continues to watch my videos and shares them and comments and gives me feedback um, I, I just really adore every one of you guys and um, just know that knowing that I have the support that I do just makes my heart smile so let's get started with the materials that you're gonna need okay so the materials you're gonna need are gonna be your yarn colors you're gonna need something for the jersey and the white pants um, I'm going to do a line. You're going to need orange for the basketball. Um, you're going to need uh, some scissors. You're going to need something for the color of his hair and his skin. A sewing needle. And I'm trying to look for my crochet thread. But you're going to need two different hooks. You're going to need a 4.0 millimeter and a 4.5 millimeter can you see that oh there you go 4.5 you're going to need two of those so uh the crochet thread is just oh here it is it's just um it's uh just cr acrylic crochet thread they use these to make doilies um th i've had this forever so i'm not even sure what the brand is but that you can get that at any yarn store so the first thing we're going to do is grab our 4.5 millimeter hook and we're going to make everything, all the all the separate pieces that um, we need this size hook for. So that's we're going to start with the head and do your magic circle. Okay, and then I like to chain two and then make ten double crochets. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the chain two does not count for anything. We'll close our circle and let's go back just to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we want to slip the join at the top of your first double crochet and not the chain two. Chain two kind of like disappears in the background. We're going to chain two again and then we're going to make two double crochets in each stitch for a total of ten double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I will meet you at the end of the round. And again, that's two double crochets in each of these stitches and then slip to join and I will meet you back. All right, so we just completed our 20th double crochet. Now we're going to slip to join at the top of that first double crochet. Okay, and in that same stitch, we're going to single crochet. Okay, and we're going to chain four one two three four and we're going to slip stitch in that same stitch that's just a pico picos can be made um, in all uh, amounts of chains um, that's a four chain pico and then we're going to 
uh, slip stitch really loosely, not really tight, in the next nine stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then your tenth stitch we're going to single crochet, chain four, one, two, three, four, and then we are going to slip stitch to join, and then we're going to fasten off. You want to leave um, a six, six to eight inch tail. Okay, and now what we've done is made our ears. And that is, uh, the slip stitches are going to be at the bottom. So the next thing we're going to do are his arms. So using the same color and the same hook. Boy, you can see everything under this HD light, all this hair. All right, we are going to chain 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then double crochet in the third chain from the hook. One, two, three, and in every stitch back to your beginning um, chain. So we're going to count the chain three as a double crochet. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and that will come out to 11 double crochet so just repeat this for the second arm again that's chain 13 double crochet into the third chain from your hook and then double crochet to your first one that should leave you 10 double crochets plus your chain three and then you always want to leave um, a tail so go ahead and finish that and then get uh, the hair color that you're going to use and I will meet you back. Okay, real quickly, you're also going to need some stick pens. So I forgot to mention that in the material list. I wanted to get that in there. Um, we have our two arms. Okay, I'm going to set those aside. We have his head and now we're just going to attach his hair. This is going to be super duper easy. Um, this pattern uses the Pico stitch a lot. so. If you're not familiar with that, you'll be familiar with it by the end of this pattern. Trust and believe. So, we get to the hair and we're going to attach to the right side. Now, mind you, remember the loose slip stitches are going to be at the bottom. Okay, so you should be where you fastened off. That's where we're going to um, start and it should be your right ear. We're just going to go into that next stitch to the left from the ear. Okay, we're going to slip stitch to join, and in that same stitch, we're going to single crochet. Okay, we're going to chain two, and then we're going to slip stitch in that same stitch. We're going to go to the next stitch and single crochet. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, and in that same stitch, we're just going to slip stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to single crochet and we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Slip stitch in that same stitch. Single crochet in the next stitch. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in that same stitch. I mean, slip stitch in that same stitch. Single crochet in the next. And in fact, in this one and that one, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. 
slip stitch in the same stitch single crochet in the ne in the next stitch chain five one two three four five slip stitch in the same stitch single crochet in the next stitch so we just finished five in a row and now we're going back down so we're going to chain four one two three four slip stitch in the same stitch single crochet in the next stitch chain three one two three slip stitch in that same stitch single crochet in the next stitch and we're going to finish up with the chain two and slip stitch in that same stitch and then we're just going to chain one and fasten off so it gives the it gives i mean you can look at it and like it could be like a spike look curly hair um however you want to interpret it so we've done the um the arms the hair now we're going to do the headband so you're going to pick the color that you're going to use for the headband so that it's going to be the same as the jersey let me get my applique here yep and I'm just going to go with lime for this one. So real quickly, get that yarn together. And our headband is just a chain 13 in single crochet in the second chain from your hook. So we're going to chain 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then just single crochet all the way back to your beginning chain. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, this is scrap yarn. I forgot to, to mention that. I'm using, I'm just trying to find ways to use my scrap yarn up. I just have too much of it. Um, you might have to adjust this. You might have to add more chains. You might have to do less, but this is where we need it to be. We need it to cover from one ear to the other ear and probably up by the hairline. You can, it can like do a little, um, upside down smile thingamajig like right there, but that's how we need it to fit. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, after your chain 13, Pull it up there and see if you have it, if you've gone enough. I mean, it's just a chain 13. If you have to frog it and do it all over, it's not that big of a deal. But that's the kind of look we're looking for. So I'm going to fasten off and sew in these small ends. And then I'll meet you back. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make the basketball. Still using our 4.5 millimeter hooks. You want to grab your orange. And then make a magic circle how you do and then chain two and then we're going to make eight double crochets one two three four five And you can adjust your circle as you go. Six, seven, eight. Okay, now we're just going to slip stitch to the first double crochet. And then we're gonna fasten off. Well, you know what? I am so sorry. I was reading the shoes. We're not going to do that. We're going to keep going. So we have seven here. We have to make eight, uh, 15. Seven, 
so sorry about that. Now I gotta adjust my circle. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Slip to join to our first uh, double crochet and chain one and fasten off. Um, I thought that looked really small. I had to come double check my pattern again. I am so sorry for that. Work in our circle, and now um, I'm. Mine are going to have white shoes. You can, you can like adjust the pattern how you want to. Let me grab my white and I'll meet you back. Okay, so we have our white. We're still using the 4.5 millimeter hook. This is actually the last thing that we use with this size hook. And we're doing our magic circle again. Slip, chain two. Again, you can make your magic circle however you want. And now we're going to make eight double crochets not including the chain two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close our circle, slip to join at the top of your first double crochet, and then um, chain one, and then fasten off. I'm going to make another one. You will need two of these. These are the shoes, and then I will meet you back, and we can start on the jersey. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, work in your smaller tails as you get done with your pieces. I'm telling you, it's going to be... A lot less tedious when you get down to sewing the pieces together because you're gonna have tail city like no joke so now we're gonna grab our other hook the 4.0 hook 4.0 millimeter hook and we're gonna get a slip knot and we're gonna chain 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And double crochet in the third chain from your hook. 1, 2, 3. And in each chain, back to your beginning chain. Two. So we're going to count the three as a double crochet. So this is three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you will have at the end of your uh, chain, you will have. This is breaking up. Sorry about that. You will have 12 double crochets. 11 double crochets plus your chain 3. Okay? So now what we're going to do is this is how we're going to work up each row. We're going to need 4 rows for your jersey. So we're going to just pull up our loop, turn our work, and then just go right into this same one right here and double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, 
and then that last one that you're gonna have to squeeze in 12 so you should have 12 double double crochets do this for another two rows for four rows total and I'll meet you back all right so after your fourth row you just chain one and fasten off I've already done that now you want to turn your work upside down and get your white color or whatever color you're going to use for the pants and we're going to make one double crochet all the way across and it should come out to 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and they did okay so we're just going to do the same thing we did is pull our loop and turn our work and insert and we're going to make five double crochets in the next five stitches one two three four five okay we're going to pull up our loop turn our work and then do the same thing five double crochets in the next and the one double crochet in the same stitch and then four double crochets two three for a total of five okay we're going to chain one fasten off grab your skin color okay so i've grabbed my skin color and i'm going to attach and we're going to make three rows of five double, double crochets so if you want to come in here and chain three you can I just like to do these double crochets um, like this just yarning over first and hanging on to it with my index finger and then getting into my first double crochet you know what I am going to start where I left off and then hanging on to all the loops with my index finger and you can make your double crochet like that one two, three, four, five, again pull up our loop, turn our work, and then we're going to make two more rows. I don't want that too far up. While we starting in that first stitch, there is no chain one or chain two in this pattern. One, two, three, four, five, again, pulling up our working yarn, turning our work, and then going in and making this last row of five double crochets. And then we're just going to repeat for the second leg. This is actually the leg, chain one and fasten off, and then the white is actually the shorts, the basketball shorts. And then you'll want to start here and then do two rows of your white and then three rows of your leg and I will meet you back. Okay, so this is what your piece should be looking like after everything. Right now I want you to take the time and sew up all your short ends. Not the long ends, but the short ends. We need all of those out the way so we can assemble our um, basketball guy. And it will be a lot easier. So on any pieces that you haven't done, the small, the small ends, go ahead and hide those. Or um, uh, take care of them how you are going to take care of them. And I will meet you back. And, and also, I, you'll want to get your stick pens. Have those handy. Okay? 
All right, so we have everything sewn in except the long ends. We have our stick pins, and we're also going to need our needle at this time. And we're just going to try to on, uh, assemble our little basketball guide just with stick pins right now. And we can take them out as we sew. And then you just want to curve that headband a little bit. And the um, the headband should be right where the, your ear is at. You see where that's at? Make sure they're even on both sides. Okay, that's for the head. Um, the arms. Let's see. We'll pin one right there. And then we'll take the other one and you see how the, they naturally curl with this which is awesome because that's going to help us when we put our arm around the basketball and you can also turn it the other way if you want I think I'm just going to leave it like that but just try to match corners here because we don't want to see the jersey and again just stick pins for now we are going to have to um, get your your shoes well, those are just going to be I like to I found it easier to put the long tail up on top for these they're gonna probably cover up the first the the last row of your leg color try not to poke yourself like I just did oh not cute and then this one again covering up that last row of double crochet for your legs okay and then your your head's going to go on kind of like that we want it to uh, touch the skin but then again we want to have enough to put our number on our jersey so I usually use a bigger stick pen for this and I am so sorry um you might need beads of some kind if not um I can teach you how to do the French knots for your eyes I'm just going to do a general I did do some a general little stitch right there for the eyes but I did do these I don't know if you can see those how they lift a little bit these are just some decorative craft beads and I just stuck those in there and before we pin on our our um, basketball, let's get our crochet thread and get our thinner needle so we can make this design for our basketball. So let's do that right quick. Okay, so I have our little basketball in our crochet thread. I've also put a knot at the end, which isn't staying. I might just have to make it stay with the crochet hook. And all we're going to do for this design, and it's, it's really basic, is uh, right here where we have our tail, we're just going to do like a cross without getting your tail caught up in there. But you don't, you want to leave the stitch right here because we'll be using the outer stitch to uh, sew. And you just do a line up and down, a line across. And then what I did is just did a V. I came up from the middle. Actually, I, I did this from the outside and then met in the middle. For each side right here. And then met in the middle. Oops. Don't do that get like a knot going there and then all the way around on each quarter because it's like four parts to it when you do the cross and that's it that's all I did for the design and then I came back here in the back and then just made a knot 
can fasten up. And what I'm going to do right now, since I have this crochet thread, I hope I have enough. I'm going to go ahead and make the eyes and get that get that done on that piece. Okay. And you can put the eyes anywhere you want. Doesn't matter. I like them close together. And you can make them big. I need to go through that two times. This thread is really thin. Try to center them. Use your uh, stitches as guides. As best you can. Oops, that looks a little crooked. I need to go out on that one. All right, he'll do for now. I might go back and fix him if I'm not, if I'm terribly uh, dissatisfied. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that. We'll put the number on last, and then there's other details that you can do. And then, let's see, let's go ahead and put the football out here. And you can position this any way you want. Just try to put your stick pins, you'll want this uh, down here, like around it. Like the double crochets are very flexible, I think is the word I'm looking for. You can like mold it and then just stick, stick a pin. Okay, so let's get our bigger sewing needle. And... That's how essentially how I want it. Do you see that I was not kidding when I said that there was going to be ends galore here? So, first thing we want to do is uh, our um, headband. So we'll start with that. Oops, took out the wrong side. That's not the side with the tail. Start with this. And I'm just going to put the stitch right here in front, right in front of your ear, at the bottom of the hairline. I'm going to take out this pin. And then I'm going to come in from the back with our needle. And then just do like a simple up and down stitch using our stitches as our guides all the way to the other end. This is how you're going to sew all of your pieces together. You're going to use these stitches as a guide. These little lumps right here, you're going to have them at the top and the bottom. Those are where, you, th that's what you're going to use as your guide to sew these pieces together. I'm really worried that that's going to come out the end part right here. I'm going to take this pen off. I had to, I can't find my my newest pin cushion. So I had to dig up my old one. It's really old. But it does the job. And that's all that matters. And then we're just going to come in, make this last stitch. And this is going to be kind of tedious. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. A piece of hair is bothering me. And then just try to secure it underneath the hair. All right. This little black piece of hair, I'm sorry. It's distracting me. So we turn our work around, and I'm not doing a lot of sewing ends in. I'm just using this smaller crochet hook. And if you've seen my videos, I do this all the time. I'm sewing this piece on a garment, so <laughs> I'm not worried about it coming undone, but I will like make a knot a couple times just to secure it really good. Okay, and we're not going to use all of these ends, but I just wanted to give you a general idea of how this was coming together. So some of this stuff I'm going to take apart, like 
I don't want to get stuck by this. And as we do the arms at a time, I'm going to do one arm, I'm going to do the other, and then I'm going to do the face. So let's do that. Oops, might need my needle. Okay. And I want to be sure that I'm putting this at an angle. And just crocheting. Like that right now. Now what I did is I did a single crochet row all the way around the same color as the garment, my grandson's robe. That way I didn't have to deal with different trying to match colors and stuff. So maybe come down a little one or two. One or two stitches down here. I'd say down to his waist. Because we did leave it a little open for definition. It's turned out really good. Like it gave when I get when I did my single crochet row, it gave it gave the his uh it gave the pattern a whole new personality. Like he's kind of off to the side, whereas he wasn't before. And then we're just going to fasten off like that. Okay. So go ahead and do this arm, and then we can do the, the, uh, the um, actually, let's do it together, because we need to be sure that we're going to be able to get, this arm is going to have to be at an angle. Okay, so you see where the corner of that is? We want to match the corner because this can be tricky. If you put it on the same way as you did this one, it's not going to bend. So we're just going to like, let me see, it's better to show you than to. So we're going to sew maybe three stitches over here at the corner of the right part because we need that arm to fold up a little bit to grasp the uh, football. So we're going to come back down and then come back up. You might get different looks as well due to maybe the different yarns that people are going to use. If you're going to use all one brand, you might not find, you know, some differences. I'm going to put two, two knots right there and then turn it around and put another knot just to be safe. Then I'm going to cut this, that tail out the way, and then come back and do our head all right so my tail was up here for my my head part so i'm just bringing it down in the back a little bit to get it closer to where we need it to be okay so now what we're going to do is be sure that we're covering this top this top portion of his jersey and that's all and then we're also just going to attach to our arm as well so I'm going to do two stitches, and I don't have a lot of yarn to work with. I hope I have enough this way. And then I'm going to go in and out the front. Run his chin. Ooh, it's going to be close. I think I got it, though. And then attach here. Maybe one more. I don't know. It's going to push it. I just need that secure right here on this, on the left side a little better. And I'm, there's no way I'm going to get that through. So I'm going to go in from the bottom. I don't know if you guys know that that's a trick to do that, to get that last stitch in there. And I am good with that. 
So I'm going to cut some more tails and then I'll meet you back and we can do the basketball. All right, so moving on to our basketball. Okay, now we're going to just put this under his arm like he's cuffing it like that. And I don't know if you guys want to do this, but I am. I'm going to put a stick pin there just to help me out. I know it's going to get in the way, but oh well. So from here, we just want to uh, sew the the basketball in the center part, like right here, under the same arm that's holding it. And we need to go in and out those stitches all the way around. Okay. Pretty simple. It's just a little tedious. But this turns out so cute. I'm really excited because I'm going to do a baseball, a soccer, and a football one. That Those are all the sports my grandson is in. My granddaughter keeps him very busy and it keeps him out of trouble and there's nothing wrong with that. So once you've sewn the basketball on, you just go in the back and then work your tails in. Or sew them in if you prefer. It's crocheter's choice. And then now we're going to attach our feet. Okay, so go ahead and thread the needle for your first, first foot. I'll do the first foot with you and then you can do that second one and then we'll come back and do a number. Okay, and like I said, this is probably this is going to cover the whole most of that last row right there. And we're just going to crochet in and out just like we did with the basketball. Of course, you only have to go to the bottom right here of that last double crochet row of your leg. Just like that. Go back to the beginning. Come back and then just work in your end. I'm going to show you how to work in the, the ends for the uh, feet. And the reason that I had you um, um, leave those long ends is because if you are going to sew it on something and not do a single crochet row you're going to need that same color okay so like for these if they stick out a little bit like this is sticking out a little bit right there there's a real easy way to fix that and what we're going to do is just take this and Go in, but we're really not showing it. We just want to bring it in just like that. Now it's not sticking out anymore, but it's in there. It's just a tiny, tiny stitch. And then you can work in a, work it in some more if you want. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to make sure the other end isn't popping out like that either. And just now you just do one stitch grab that outside stitch and then bring it in there and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I turn this around after I do this knot see now it's not sticking out anymore so go ahead and do this foot I'll meet you back oh my goodness it doesn't look like we left any room for for a number we'll have to work with that i'll meet you back okay guys so what i did is i took the stitch out for the basketball because we're going to need room for the number and now i just repositioned it and reattached 
and I'm just sewing it back and I, I just wanted to show you this because just in case it happens to you that you forget to leave some room for the number and that's only if you want your jersey to have a number it doesn't really have to have a number but I'm just sewing it on again I repositioned it and made room for um, our number and I'm just sewing it back I'm going to take this pin out now. And I'm so sorry about that. I was just getting all into the pattern and then forgot to leave room for our jersey number. And again, you know, this is my pattern. I'm sharing it with a number, so I'm going to make a number. We're just, you know, making sure that it is sewed on and of course you get to these stitches you might not have any anything to sew it on to but now we're back to the beginning and I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot and fasten off what happened to my little scissors but yeah, I just wanted to clean that up for you. And then, let's see, I don't need this yarn for anything because I am going to show you, again, it's optional if you want to do a single crochet outline. But I did do, if you see right here, I just did some lines right there. That's optional too. I'm not going to have enough money or enough room for that. But let me go grab... Some more yarn and show you how I did that. Now you can make a straight line if you want to up and down. Um, I'll show you how. I did it in and out of the rows on that one, but this might be easier, come to think of it. And I'm just going to do it in the second, cro second crochet from the outside of your first row of your pants. And then just go all the way down. Maybe I'll do it twice. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here, the second, top of the second, yeah, just so they're even. And then go to the bottom. Like that. Turn it around. I want to have enough um, so that I can um, make my number, my jersey number. So I'm going to take these two, I'm going to tie these, and I'm going to tie them, and I will meet you back. Alright, so I have those tied off, and I'm going to make the number, and I don't know why I was thinking I was going to make a green number, but clearly I need to make the number white and I'm just since I don't have a lot of room there I'm just gonna make a number one and I'm probably in one two three four five six seven maybe I'll make a seven eight nine I mean, I'm not really great with numbers. Maybe you guys are, but I'm not. We'll just swing it with that. Lucky seven. That's why I did that one. We'll sew it on. And then I'm going to finish up by uh, showing you how I made the single crochet row. Because that too can be a little tedious. I'm going to pin the top part since the 
So that's, I have to start from the bottom. I might have made this too long. Let's see. And then we're just going to sew it up. Numbers can be tricky. I seen a picture on Pinterest and I was like, I bet you I can make a pattern. And I mean, I had a paid pattern and everything, but I don't, I don't buy patterns. I just don't. I look at a picture and I make up my own pattern. And I've been trying to do that. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I'm just so glad I was able to get it done. My grandson was like, when are you going to finish my robe, Mima? And I was like, you know what? I need to get on it. And then, of course, my granddaughter was like, when am I going to get one, Mima? She wants ballerinas on hers. And I thought, maybe I'll make a girl version that has, like, girl stuff on there, like cheerleading, um, gymnastics, ballerina, you know, stuff that girls do. Even soccer. Girls do soccer, too. She said she wanted her strictly ballerinas. So we'll see on that one. Maybe something in the future. Now with this tail, I'm just going to take this smaller hook and work that to the back. And then work it through some stitches where it's not going to show on the front. Put in a knot. And I am using a whole bunch of different varieties of thread. Like I said, this is my stash yarn. Okay, there you have it. The cute little basketball guy. So let me go get a background color that's going to be okay with the camera. And I'll show you how to put in that single crochet row. Alright, so I'm going to do this bright mustard color. And I went and grabbed my bigger hook, the 4.5. Uh, that's what I did with my other one. I think I'm going to just start at the bottom by the leg. No, wait, I think I started. When did I start the other one? I think I started up here by the hair. And all I'm doing is attaching in that first stitch. And this is a single crochet row. And what I did is inside the picos, just do a stitch. Just like that. It kind of makes the hair a little more defined. Squeaky yarn going on here. Inside the picos. And this is going to puff out a little bit too. Then behind the, the stitch right behind the ear and then I actually pulled the ear in and did a stitch behind the ear because I want people to see the ear and then started in on the stitches under the ear let me refer to this one okay and then I got down to the neck shoulder part and then just and this is gonna be tedious because especially if you got sewing in on here and then we're just going to make a single crochet in every stitch of the arm I'm trying not to leave like big gaps. I know everybody's arms and stuff is going to be different, but once you know, you want to have that little bit of arm away from the body and then join back up to your body. Like I am right now on this stitch, I'm going to join. And then now I'm getting his waist. And then I put one 
single crochet in each row of the double crochets I think and then one in his legs just do the best you can if you don't like the way it looks take it out do it again it's not a big deal and you don't even have to do this part if you don't want to so I know for the feet I put two in each because generally this is when you do a circle like this you're increasing on your second round and we only did one round so for each of the stitches down here where his tennis shoes are not his feet it's tennis shoes make two double crochets Well, now we're going back to his body, so we're just going back to one single crochet. I mean, single crochets here. I hope I didn't say double crochets. I don't know why they went into my mind. If I did, I meant single crochets. And again, just do the best you can. It is going to be tedious. But what cute things aren't. Especially some of the things that I make. But they're generally always worth it and you don't want your stuff falling apart in a wash. Oops. Okay. Top of the leg. Inner leg. Other leg. And just keep going. Just try to be consistent. I can't give you a stitch count. I'm so sorry. It's just going to be different with everybody. I'm just trying to really show you how this works up. <laughs> My grandson wanted to take it home with him. I'm like, no, you can't take it home with him. He want to take it to school. So now I'm at the other shoe, and again, we're doing two double two single crochets in each one. He said, well, I'm going to, they have pajama day at school, so he's going to take his robe for pajama day. So I plan on finishing those other patterns this week. I was very surprised that it didn't take that long for this pattern, so I'm sure the other ones are going to come along very nicely like this one did. Oh yeah, now he wants he wants a hood on his on his robe and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it's just gonna be that's gonna take a little more time, just so you know. So now we're going up to the other leg. Again like one single crochet in each of the double crochet rows. Going up the side of his pant leg. Oops. Try not to get too close in the camera where you can't see it. Now we're on the basketball. We're just doing like an outline, remember. Got the yarn all tangled up here. Sorry. Go around the basketball. I'm going to go in one more stitch. And maybe in this stitch just so I can get more definition around the basketball. Now I'm going to his arms. You'll find the stitches start appearing themselves. See like that? I don't want to do that. If I don't went in there, that would have been a big space so I'm just gonna go through one loop you might have to do that too just use your judgment and then these like these stitches are pretty self-explanatory huh moving along the arm at least he 
You know, you could put this on a blanket for somebody, like a big C2C blanket or a granny square blanket. And just put it in a corner or put one of each of them if you got if you know somebody, little boys that are just totally athletic, super active and okay, yeah, that, that one was a tedious. So now I'm getting back here around to the neck area. Now I'm going to more of the neck. Now I'm going to the head. And again, we're at the ear. We're not going to put it in the ear. We're going to go behind the ear because we want the ears to stick out. Lo and behold, there is an end. Thank you, Jesus. But I think I'm going to do one more stitch right here. Or slip stitch there. And up here. All right, chain one. I'm gonna leave a lot long tail because I already know I'm making the second one for somebody. So now, you see what I mean about the ears popping out a little bit? Yeah, we need that definition. And here's your guy. Isn't he cute? And I like the way it lifts up like that. It's like a 3D thing going on. So yeah, there he is. You know, if you don't want this curling up, you can put two double crochets up, or two sing single crochets up around here. I like it. It doesn't bother me, but I know maybe um, you might not. That, that'll be all right. But there it is. There's your little basketball buddy. Um, I just, again, want to thank everybody uh, for their uh, support. And um, I'm sorry for any confusion. I appreciate everybody's patience. Please share, like, comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified of the other, um, the other athletic characters that I'm going to do. And together, let's continue to crochet it forward. Bye now.